welcome to the opening show for Series 9 of Sport Fishing on the Fly. We wanted to show you something special to launch the new series, and what better place to start than Tofino. Tofino is a beautiful little town situated on the west coast of Vancouver Island, and if it's large salmon you're after, well Tofino is a place to be. We hooked up with Sean Bennett of Way West Resort, and he's guiding us into some of the best coho waters in the world. Casting for coho salmon, that's today on Sport Fishing on the Fly. Well, you know, we just got into the good spot there. Sean's got us into the good spot. Cast the last cast out, we saw him follow it up. This is just the next cast, and this time he took it. It was almost got it right up to the boat again before he took it. It looks and like a big one. It's a nice sized <laughs> oh, fish, and yeah. they got so much power. They just, oh, it's just Way amazing. A 14 pound first, test but... on here, got the tension cranked right down, and they just go. They're amazing fish. Which is what we came for. Got the big power. There he is right there. You got a, how big is this guy? You know, we got to talk about the last time we were here, which was two years ago, because we caught some fish that were, well, I think fairly decent in size, <laughs> but Sean has a tendency to be a typical guide and underestimate a little bit on yeah, the actual I, size of the fish. Well, I, a lot of fishermen like to exaggerate. I like to go the opposite way. So. Well, and that's all right too. Oh, oh actually, that's, yeah. That, that might go 10. Oh, that yeah. might go 10 so. That's a dandy. Wow. Actually, that might go over 10. That's nice. <laughs> that's a sick. big fish. That's a beauty. It is a coho. You can tell mainly by the lips, right? That's the best. Now, he might take a bolt when I go grab him. Okay. Actually, yeah. that's going to go 12 pounds. 12 pounds. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh yeah. That's a beauty. I'll get a pop of that. What a what a great start. Look at that. that. Barbless hooks, of course. Nice thick fish. Oh, yeah. Get, look at him down. Oh, yeah. Down. That's a beauty. <laughs> there he oh, goes. Just like that. <laughs> that was oh, right right on. Good. Thanks, Sean. Good stuff. Okay, well, let's, spot. let's hit that corner again, see oh. if we can pull another one up. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This is just going to be an awesome show. I can just tell. <laughs> Just like that. It happens. You can only come out of the air so many times before yeah. you finally lose them, right? Oh, and I, 50 percent. I mean, uh, there you go. Two fish, lo one landed, one gone. But that that happens. They're very, very good at shaking barbless hooks. Yeah. You know, all tidal water regions of BC is now barbless, so you know it's a little easier on the fish. But you get the chance to play them like that and jump, and off he goes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Well, I think I'm putting on an orange clothes. Yeah, we yeah. might want to. It seems like, uh, seems there, like the fly of choice. We found what they're taking. That's a good spot, too. Well, you called it. Just perfect timing. Said we're over the bait ball. The salmon's showing. Are you in your, your fly line yet? I'm, I'm back into here. my fly line now. Oh. Finally. Oh. Yeah, but yeah the, having the, the depth sounder there? It's, it's a great tool. We pulled over time. I mean, for finding bait, you want to find bait. Uh, where there's bait, there's <laughs> there's usually salmon. And actually, just as we pulled over top of the bait, you could tell you could tell that the uh, salmon was crashing right through the bait because there was uh, streaks right <laughs> through the middle of the bait ball. You know what? I was back into my fly line. Now I'm back into my backing again. Oh, and they come right back. They just run way out, and then they come all the way back in. Oh. If you've never done this, you got to come to Way West and give it a try because it's some of the best fishing you're ever going to experience, just ever. Wow. Look at that guy just sitting there, right? Now, that's a wild fish again. Another wild fish. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, that's pretty. Now that's a, this is a bruiser too. I'm just gonna take it easy with him. Okay. And boy, you know what? Right after this fish, guess where we're going? To the bench? We're going to the bench. <laughs> we're gonna tie this fly up because it is being super productive. I mean, we've just been catching them steady on this. It's a simple tie too. It's oh, a very simple tie. Fantastic pattern. Okay, one more time. Oh, Sorry, okay. Don. Oh, another beautiful coho. Wow. Oh, he Whoa. slipped. They're hard to get around the tail there. Oh, I'm making this tough for you, Don. Oh, and Sorry, they go right for the right for the bottom of the boat. Okay. Got him in they don't like oh, that looks like that fly is just barely hooked. Too. Well, yeah, we might we might uh, we might lose him here, but and we are using the barbless hooks as always out here, so we can release. Got him that time. There you go. The barbless hooks just come out like nothing. That's there a cromer. Oh, See, there's it. the adipose fin on the back. Right there. If that was miss missing, it would be a hatchery fin you clip. Keep it. You keep keep about Look returning all, all the wild fish to the back. Oh, oh there, there he goes. goes. <laughs> nice and strong. Way to go, Don. Definitely unbelievable. You know, it's okay. just begun. We we probably been out here for what? How long we've been out here for? An hour? Oh, just an hour, yeah. yeah in this that, spot. Yeah. In this yeah. one yeah. spot. We're yeah. we're full hour into the flood tide. Yeah, just and after we're just slot. getting in the flood tide. And you were saying the best time to come out here is an hour before the tide and an hour after. I like to pick two two hours before, two hours after, yeah. because you, again, you, there's no way of predicting when there's going to be a bite. It can happen after the flood tide. It can yeah. happen before. Um, I particularly like a high slack. Although we can have some good fishing on an ebb tide or yeah, a low well, tide as well. I'll stop wasting time and get out of it. Sure. Again. What about the bench here? Oh yeah, that's right. Let's let's send it to the bench right now because that fly right there. Fly of the day. Fly of the day, Granny. You had three, four fish bingo right yeah. off the bat. I yeah. finally got one. That's the baby right there. So orange clouser. Let's go to the bench. We're tying up the orange clouser. All right, we came off the water and I've got Sean here. We're going to tie up the orange clouser. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're going to use a Mustad 34007 size 1. We'll tie with some orange 6 odd thread. We'll use some medium dumbbell eyes for the eyes and some pearl crystal flash with some orange polar bear hair for the wing. Okay, let's begin. Start with the thread and what I'm going to do is form two bumps on the hook for the eye to sit in between. And we lock the eyes on, get them started, and it's a figure eight motion, back and forth. You want to bind that on nice and tight. And now, invert the hook. And we're going to tie on four strands of crystal flash doubled over on the thread, which will give us eight strands. Now I'm going to cut some orange polar bear hair, and I'm going to pull out the under fur. And I see you don't cut the ends. You just no, the I, ends. I like them nice and tapered, and uh, I never stack hair either. It's nice to have a nice tapered finish to it, and I will even, uh, I hate to do this, but run it through my mouth. Okay. Just so I can see the and length. And how far of the back are you going back there? Probably a half inch to an inch past the eye of the hook. Okay. And some people like to tie the hair on and then clip it. I like to clip it first and then tie it on. Just okay. grab it with my thread. And it is a very simple and fast fly to tie because this is pretty much it. I'm going to tie that head on. It's a sparse fly. And you leave the crystal flash nice and long? Yeah, well what, what you can do is I like to leave it long but um, a lot of the experts say cut them at different lengths to pull it back and give a couple snips here, a couple snips there and it adds a little bit of sparkle at different lengths in the fly. Excellent. And that's it. And that's all there is to the fly. That's it. Boy, there's a very simple pattern for you. Thanks for tying that up and uh, just stay tuned because the fishing that we had with this orange closer, absolutely phenomenal. Thanks again, Sean. Okay, you see, you see where he is? He's oh way over gosh. here. Your fly line's 
Oh, he's right on the surface now. Yep. Oh, well, here's man. where your fly fishing skills come oh. in big time. No kidding. Oh, you got to feel the reel up Look so fast. Him, this okay. guy's huge. Well, no one to let him go. Oh, it is. Oh, Look at him in the, look at him in the waves when he comes up. He is real big. This one is big. <laughs> there he oh, goes. Oh, oh, man, it takes off. <laughs> Shakes the tail and gone. I'm out of here. He took it behind the motor, and he ran so fast that way, I couldn't even believe it. Yeah. He was just gone like a bullet. Boy, and you have to have these big arbor reels, you know, these large arbors? Yeah. You have to have them to pick up the line fast enough. Well, you know, we're lucky because we get a lot of equipment given to us, and whenever we get into a different situation, we're fortunate enough to have the right type of equipment to match the way we're fishing. And today, that's so important. We've got the eight-way rods, we got yep. the good reels, we got the lines. If it wasn't for these lines, again. We wouldn't be getting down to where the fish are. Yeah, yeah. these time, these real tungsten dredgers are the cat's meow for out here. Like they are the best. Because that's what you want. You want a sink tip. You know, well, full sinks are good. Well, so, you're bringing the line up vertically this way with the sink tip. So the way they sink, they go down. Oh man! Oh man! Oh, look at well, them dance. Well, when we get this done here, that, that's a good point, Sean, because you're talking about the different retrieves. Well, getting down is important. The quicker you can get down, the quicker you're in the zone the more fish you're going to have. Uh, if you're oh. using a slow sinker, and uh, you're wasting time letting your fly get down. The, you're going to have, uh, you're going to show your fly to more fish the quicker you get down. But it's also the way you're retrieving it too, isn't it? With the wet line versus the sink tip? Exactly. Well. Using a full sinker, it's going to, a uniform sink is going to go down. You're going to bring the fly through the water column horizontally where I prefer. See the angle his fly line's on? I like yeah. to bring it up on a uh, 45 or even vertical. When you're like, we've, we're in 40 feet of water here. Um, pulling the water, you're, you're also going to show your fly to more fish, bringing it up through the water column. Okay. Well, I think he's done. I think he's ready to come yeah. in. Maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. Touch the tail. Oh, oh, look at the size of these fish. Oh, How this big is, is that? Like, that's that is, be. I got to let him go. He's a big fish. I don't want to hold on to him. <laughs> that's like the first one I had. Jesus, these are pushing look at this. 10, 10 plus pounds for sure. <laughs> These fish. That one's, yeah, that one's over 10 easy. That's like That's your first, first one, Granny, one. eh? first one we figured was about 12. That guy's got to be close to 12 also. Oh, yeah. Oh, Look yeah. at that. Man, oh, man. Nice fish. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that'll, that'll go 12, 13. <laughs> Look at how thick it is. Look at, oh, look at that, oh, that, that is, fish. That's massive. There you that's go, folks. That's what you expect to get if you come here. Look at the size of that. Wow. Oh, what a fight. That was one of the best fights I've ever had. Yeah. Holy cow. There he goes. Oh, yeah. There he goes. Off right, to the right. deep so we can Holy do it again. Holy cow. And you kept up on them. They're, excellent. They're you know, hard to keep up on when they race at you like that, but you managed. That's a real yeah. good point, is because it really does test your fly fishing skill. If you can keep the pressure on them, with barbless hooks especially, you have to catch up. You know, my arm's bagged. I can sit now. I'm done for. It's important, to, it's important to keep the pressure on them, because they'll turn their head and the hook will just fall right out. Wow. So what an awesome day of fishing. <laughs> I just can't believe it. Well, you know what? There, there is more, though. And that's, that's why it's killer. That fly right now is the pattern of choice. Mm -hmm. It sure is, yeah. yeah. That's the one. Good. Let's well, go get him. Back at it. Well, you Thank it. you, sir. Very good. So strong. Oh, my arm's getting tired. What a great day. Ah, wow. Now, I don't know if it was, we had a heavy cloud cover there. The tide changed, which is going to affect it, but also the light level changed, and uh, the fish just seemed to come on all of a sudden. Did they ever, yeah? yeah. Well, you know, we're, what we're doing is we're doing the cast fly. We did another show here where we were actually trolling, doing yes. bucktailing, which is another way of doing it. The cast fly is fun. Oh, trolling yeah. is okay too, yeah. but the best time to, for a cast fly is tide change. Well, I like to target. I like to target either side of the tide change because there's no way of knowing when the fish are going to bite. And I've given up trying to predict the bite times. <laughs> yep. You know, I'll say, well, this looks like a good flood tide. Uh, we'll fish the high slack before the tide change. It'll definitely be a bite. Nothing happens, and it's on the other side of the tide change. Or you go out and specifically fish tide changes, nothing happens, and right between tides, like three hours after a change, you'll have a bite come on. So again, there's no way of predicting it. Now we're in Coho country. Oh, this is a big fish too. Oh man, we haven't 
the some bruiser. good luck with some big fish today, are we? Oh, wow, look I'm at this guy again. release here. Another toad. Oh, I can't okay. believe it. Wow, we caught some nice fish last time, but... Uh, okay, there we go. Now these are, uh, are catching some. Fish. These are very thick fish. Oh, now he might bolt quick. Yeah, one more time here. He just soaked me. Okay, so the first one we were figuring was 12 pounds. Okay, keep your rod tip up there just for a sec, Grant, because if, if I have to let go of this leader, okay, then I don't want uh, the slack. So a little more higher up there. Okay. So what do you think? You, know, you got to get a hold of them first before you get a good feel for weight. Wow, those are nice fish. He's not, he's not cooperating with me here, guys. So I'll do my best one more time. They don't like having a kill touch, too. They do don't, they? not at all. Is that coho? That is a beauty. Yeah. Okay, can you, that's a marvelous suck, so just give her a twist. There we go. It's almost got the black mouth on in there, but not quite, eh? Not no, quite white, white gums around the teeth. We'll okay. mark a coho. Wow. Not a, just a perfect silver oh. bullet, not missing a scale. Unbelievable. How big? Okay. That'll go eight, nine pounds. Right on. Oh. Okay. That is just amazing. And uh, he'll get his strength back here very shortly. What I'm doing is just moving him through the water, putting some water through his gills. And the regulations this year, you're actually allowed to keep some of the coho. You are. We're, we, within, we have a, a, a regulation, two fin clip coho a day, you're allowed to retain. And it's inside a retention zone. And the retention zone's been given to us uh, to keep fin clip inside. And we know we're not catching any stocks of concern inside that line. And we know that because uh, Department of Fisheries and Oceans has a coded wire tag program and uh, they've given us fin clip fish. So we're releasing the wild fish. That was again a wild fish, it right. had an adipose fin. Yep. It's missing an adipose fin within the regulations, you're allowed two fish. It's a coho. Oh, oh yeah, double header. Oh, a double yeah, header. Double header coho. Double header coho. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be fun. Oh. You guys better swap ends in the boat here. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh no, there he goes. This. I don't think so. Wow. And you lost yours. Well, it's so cool. You know, Sean said to make sure that if you, so one guy gets a fish on, cast in there because there's usually other guys around. Whether the fish is acting like a big flasher and it, yep. you know, it's in distress and the other fish want to see what's going on, so they came in there. And it was a smaller it. fish, but he took it, yeah. Unreal. But I just I had no place to go. He went under the boat. And, a double header on coal hole. Yeah. Fantastic. And the cast fly. And the, and the cast fly. And this is, uh, oh. You know, we haven't moved from this spot. You can see the rocks and everything else, and the coho have just stacked up in here. They're, what, at 25 feet? 25 to 35. And just stacked up. And we're just saying, and the big key here, the critical part, is having that fly line come straight up. If it comes up vertically, we're getting a fish almost every cast. Yeah, yeah it's good. Every time it's on a bit of an angle, we're not getting them. When, we're that, when it's coming straight up, we're getting the fish. Fantastic. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, you got that guy in yet? <laughs> Still going. In a day, if you can get four or five of these, you're done. Like, that's it. That, your day is done. Well, you know what? I was happy after the first one I got, the big, what was it, about 11 or 12 pounds. I was happy after that one. This well, this it. one here has got to be it's another brood. Oh, another oh, brood. <laughs> <laughs> They're all big fish. What's well, the best big. part of today is think back to two years ago we caught a lot of fish but they weren't this big not this big. this is a big fish here wow is it ever unbelievable oh that is a big oh fish. another brute another oh, beauty right in just hooked so just really okay that is awesome you keep a tight That's line on them there don't pounds, anyways what a i would say fish, oh i know oh wow <laughs> oh, oh. Look at that. Sorry, oh, guys. Oh, no. oh, good. Well, you, well, that's, hey, that's quick what release. you call a nice quick, quick release. What happened is I gave him a little bit of slack, and that's all it takes. But uh, I wanted to pull him out so you could see how big wow, that one that was. was but hey, that was still a nice, nice fish. Sean, thanks a lot for bringing us out today. That was Josh. awesome. Thanks, man. You know, you got days fishing. such a special place here. You got the great seniors you can see behind us. You got 
great fishing. Look at the size of the fish we caught today. Uh, it's unbelievable. All big. You know, I couldn't believe that we could do better than when we were here two years ago. We were catching six, seven, eight pound fish. Now we're 10 all plus, 10 well, plus pounds. Caught that first one was like 11 or 12 pounds. Like, oh, yeah. wow, we got the biggest fish of the yeah. day right off the bat, but they were all huge. <laughs> they were all big. It was awesome. You want to have an adventure like this, make sure you give Sean a call and come out here to Way West because yeah. you will enjoy it for sure. The fly fishing and everything else that goes along with the Tofino area. And consider the waters. You know, it's fantastic out here. They've done a really good job of management and the fish are getting bigger. Yeah, it's excellent. Yes. See you next time. We're going to take you sport fishing on the fly.